What's up guys, I'm Nick, I'm your host, and welcome to the first episode of Misfire. Today I'm joined by Jacob Plute, who's a How's it going? good friend of mine that went to high school with me, and Jacob, you're at West Point now, so Damn. he is at West Point, which is a the Military Academy, the United the States military, military Academy. The Military Academy, Up yes. In New so, York. So he's going into the Army, and I am at a senior military college called the Citadel, which is in Charleston, South Carolina. So a good distance apart, a lot of differences, a lot of similarities in schools, I would say, yeah. overall. Uh, we both have to wear some pretty sweet uniforms. Uncomfortable <laughs> uniforms. <laughs> yeah. I can't um, start well. But, choke uh, your neck. Yeah, don't even get me started on the neck rash, too. That's yeah. pretty bad. But, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so today we're going to be talking about a little bit of the differences in the academies that we are both at and kind of what we plan to do in the future, um, what we're doing currently, and we're gonna kind of revisit a little bit of the past and uh, what we used to do, how we met, That's et cetera. Right. So, Jacob, why don't you start off by telling me and telling all of our listeners, um, what made you want to go to West Point? What was your driving factor? And if there was somebody that you say motivated you the most, who, who would that be if there was? one of your mentors, okay. I guess. Yeah, so it's kind of like the million dollar question. You got asked this when you're applying to college, you get asked this at, you know, just like dinners, parties, etc. Why day you wanna, one when you get day there. one when you get there, you why, know, are, why, you why are you here and what, what inspired you to be here, who inspired you? Um, and really, I think it always comes back to, when I was younger, I grew up, every man in my family has been in the military. Um, so just growing up with that kind of culture was, was something I was just used to from the get-go. And my dad was also a graduate from West Point. Um, thankfully, um, he told himself before he even had me, he wasn't going to push me to um, pursue it. Um, however, growing up, I just I felt like it was something I was called to do and be a part of something bigger than, my, bigger than myself. And he always got like the, the, um, the textbook answer of, you know, serve and stuff like that, and, and yeah. you know, defend and stuff like that, which is which is a hundred percent. I agree with that, but also just like something I've come to come to learn, and that you can probably attest to, is just the team aspect of it. Yes, and being yeah, a part sure. of something bigger than yourself, which is huge. Um, I didn't realize that the only thing that would be keeping me there are the people, yeah. um, because there's you know, as we know, both at the Citadel, I'm sure. Um, and at West Point as well is just you go through a lot of a lot of crap all the time. Yeah. Um, but really, my favorite memories are just with being buddy. with my buddies, yeah. like just messing around, like nothing huge. Just it could be just in the room or like just little pranking, things. little thing. You know the little things. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and I'd say just going back to why I went there and who inspired me. I'd probably say either my dad or my grandpa inspired me to go. Yeah, being a part of the military. Being a part of the military, lifestyle. exactly. Yeah. So my dad grew up in a military family. He lived in Iran, England, Germany. So he kind of moved around. Thankfully, I had the luxury of kind of staying in one place. Yeah, um, which a lot of people, you know, they don't have that. Exactly. I mean, we've got guys that move as young kids everywhere. Like I've exactly. got a really close buddy. His dad was in the army, moved in everywhere, and I can't, I can't imagine doing that. That would be really it's, weird. It's tough. I know a lot of guys whose dads yeah. are still in the army, um, um, back at school, and they're, they're talking about how they moved six or seven times throughout yeah. their childhood. And I'm thankful that I've had a good core group of friends that I've grown up with. But uh, yeah, probably my grandpa. He was a pilot in the Air Force for 30 years. He flew in Korea and Vietnam. So. That's pretty cool. Um, and then my dad, he, he he graduated in '80, so really, obviously no war at that time. But he was he was actually at the time training to fight the Soviets. Um, he was ADA, so that's air defense artillery. If anyone doesn't know, and so he was just he was most like, of you that don't know probably. No, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know who's listening. I don't know. Who, I don't know who's, I don't know who's listening. listening either. But 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 yeah. So so essentially, what ADA is is it's artillery, but it's it's. I guess what it sounds like is air defense, so you're shooting down planes, drones now, yeah. um, whatever it may be, um, and just like, just kind of like a tangent of just like a world example of ADA would be looking at Israel. They have something called the Iron Dome, best missile defense system in the whole, the whole world, um, and so that thing knocks down, I think it's like 90% of uh oh the yeah. incoming missiles and missiles the, and the big dome mm -hmm. and then the dylan mini on the front or whatever i don't know so what. so it's like it, they call it the dome not because so it's not because the shape it what the I iron, exactly. it's called the iron dome so what that is is it's like it's not the shape it's because yeah it's figuratively saying that's not it though is it 
No, those are, these are all their missile defenses. Okay, so, so we'll what, put a picture up for so, them, anything that we look at. Yeah. yeah, so essentially what it is is you have Israel out here, and you have the Gaza Strip where most of the fire is coming from, and they call it the Iron Dome because it's so effective that it creates this almost impenetrable layer. What about this, this guy defense. right here? Because this is so what those I was are, I'm pretty sure, those, yeah, those are Gatling guns. So those are the ones that a lot of people see that go like, like yeah. you know, those uh -huh. things. So yeah, so those have got ahead of the missiles they and look like in front England's. of them. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. They're pretty sweet. So they lock on. They they actually like. I'm pretty sure you know. I'm speaking out out of turn because I don't really know too much about it. But These just from what I disgusting. Yeah, they're crazy. But from what I understand, they they calculate where it's gonna go and they shoot in front of it and they're shooting like thousands of rounds at a second. It goes and then the missile will come and it'll hit it and then it'll take it down. But uh, those are mostly mounted on ships and stuff. So. So let me ask you this. So in high school, how Jacob and I originally met is we would, we, well, I knew Jacob slight kind of from high knew, school. We knew of each other. But really what brought us together was I, I started a landscaping business and um, we were just doing kind of some smaller jobs around where we live locally. And, you know, um, Jacob came and wanted to work for me and I was like, this dude is a badass. I could tell from the start, highly motivated, highly driven. And the way that you speak is pretty, I mean, obviously very professional. And, and a lot of people don't speak like that in high school. And finding somebody that was like mature enough to like handle small tasks efficiently was obviously really good. And, and I could tell that you were highly motivated. So what was it coming out of high school that exactly, besides like the driving factor, what, what kind of attracted you to West Point, I guess is what I'm asking. Because there's a lot of other schools. I know you wanted to do Army. Was it as simple as, I want to go into the Army, I want to do this, West Point's my, my deal? Or, or was there another magnetic pull from a desire so, to go there? Yeah, so actually I applied for the... Our, the Army scholarship, the RTC scholarship as well. And I was gonna go to Virginia Tech or Clemson, one of those two. Um, then I got accepted into West Point and I really had to weigh the options um, because they're both really good opportunities. Yeah. Obviously, um, not having to pay for school both ways was huge. Yeah, um, you got a four year? Yeah, yeah, awesome. four years. So, so I was really hyped about that. Um, and so, I mean, even my dad being a grad, he sat there and he's like, listen, we have to weigh a lot of different stuff. Um, and we can get into some of that stuff later because when we talk about the difference between the Citadel and West Point, because there are differences, but there's a lot of similarities. Um, yeah. And we'll highlight those, but I think what really drew me to West Point was just um, seeing the kind of leaders that came out of there and the history um, that the school has um, was something I just couldn't pass up. Just being a part of that legacy, um, not really really not even being a part of my dad's legacy, it was more being a part of, you know, General Grant, General Lee, all these patent, all these different people who came yep. from West Point. I just really wanted to be a part of, I guess, what we call it the long gray line, which is our history. We of, have one of those too. What, yeah. what do you call it? What do you call <laughs> the long gray line? The long gray, yeah, so the same thing. It's just this history of grads. Um, a lot of history and just uh, a lot of good things to learn there. And I, I just thought it was an opportunity I yeah. could pass up. For sure. So this is probably one of my most fun questions that I have for you. And I obviously I have my own version and we can kind of, this will be a segue into kind of the compare and contrast of West Point as a senior military, or as a military, the, the military academy. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, sure. and, and the Citadel <laughs> a senior military academy. And we can get more into comparing and contrasting, but let me let me hear just a simple rundown of day zero. What did that look like? So okay. day, day zero, you get there, you know kind of what you're getting into. Run me through what's going through your head and, and how you attack the day. So looking back, so it's called our day for us and it's the reception day. We have a six weeks uh, version of boot camp for what you're called a cadet candidate at that point, new cadet. Um, and so it's just kind of the in-doc day and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of it's a blur because it's moving so fast, but I do remember the feelings I had. So we stayed the night before in a hotel and here we are in this auditorium after waiting in line for about 30 minutes and they said, you know, they give you the whole spiel of, you know, your son or daughter is going to be doing this this summer, you know, it's going to be whatever they're going to change, you're going to see them at the end, whatever, yada, yada, Were you yada. in that or was your parents in that? All, all of us were in that and they okay. said, you have 60 seconds to say goodbye. So, you know, mom's crying, dad's like, uh, come here, son, you know, yeah, like that, all, that yeah. whole thing. And like, sister's crying, and like everyone's real sad. And so you have 60 seconds, so they line you up. And then they say, so all right. where are you lined up? Like, give me an, I, I don't know the campus, but we can kind of. 
So it's just like an auditorium. We're just in this like okay. giant. There's like a hundred of them. But they line you up in the auditorium. Yeah. So your parents are all sitting there. Okay. And you're so you're, you're not in like your barracks. No, 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 no. This and is does your barrack. Does your barracks have? Because at the Citadel, you know, we have the quad, mm -hmm. and that's where we are received mm -hmm. on matriculation day. So does your barracks have a? Uh, within the barracks only, does it have like a an open space to where you mm -hmm. PT or, or do formations? Central area, we yeah. have a, central area, north area, and, and we have a thing called the plain, which is right in front of the barracks. But is it field. in the barracks or is this out on a on a parade deck, like so, on a field? So our barracks, I know y'all have like square. So y'all room, y'all's rooms yeah. point outside, and you step outside when you leave your room, right? Yeah. I don't. Ours are buildings, but they're situated in like a square. So it's two so guns here, two guns here. One massive. Okay. But and that's but, where your formation takes place. Yeah. So there's about three subsections of these four buildings, right? Uh, yeah. All different ages, and you know, I mean, some are some are renovated, some are not. Yeah. Um, are you in a renovated? I one? just moved into the one. <laughs> so I so, <laughs> so nice. I, I went from one that that hadn't been renovated since 1970 to one that was renovated December 31st and I moved in the next day. Nice, so, dude, that's so, huge. That, by the huge. way, for those of you that don't know, that is huge. It's huge. Uh, for, for, I'm pretty much every academy, and especially and especially senior military academy, well, really all of them, because they're all old. And so a lot of these rooms are super small, super old. You're not you are not living with the luxuries of a college dorm. Not at all. And then no, people no. don't really get that off the top of their head if they don't know that about a military academy. But it's not like, you know, you've got a comfy, cozy bed and you've got, you know, like, do you break your sheets on your, when you go to, no. So you sleep on top of the, uh, exactly. on top of the mattress, yeah. on, or obviously, on top of your covers on a perfectly made mm -hmm. bed, exactly. stays tight all year long. And never uh, once, I've never once slept in my bed. We have a thing called a green girl and we, put it on the top and I, I bought a separate pillow and a separate blanket that I store under my bed. So I throw my green girl on before I go to bed. I put the pillow, put the blanket, and then in the morning, you throw the crap under the bed and then you fold your green girl up a certain way and you have to position on the bed a certain way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have never once slept in a bed. And if you were to flip my bed over, just to test how tight the corners have to be, there's probably two rolls of duct tape on the bottom holding them together. Or some people use boot blouses um, because that's we used, so tight. Uh, we use Bed stays or shirt stays. Yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. All like exactly. Line so you know what I'm talking yeah. about. So it's it's a it's a haul, but uh, and they're not they're not great beds, but they get the job. They get the job done. You, <laughs> you sleep on it beats the summer sleeping on the ground. So so, so anyways, refocusing. Oh, so you're in this order. auditorium, and that's where they line you up. So so we'll, so this is like before you get. You're not even. Your our campus is pretty big. Um, so we're actually like off in this place called Eisenhower Hall, which is they have a restaurant there for big events. It's like a giant ballroom and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, if they have like guest speakers come, they'll put a lot of people there. It can probably hold like 1,500 people in that okay. auditorium. And so you have all your family and then you're lined up just, you know, in like think of a movie theater row, you're lined yeah. up there and they say, all right, let's go. And so you start like jogging out and you turn the corner and right after you're out of your parents' cadre. eyes, they're boom, you know, let's go, let's go. Mm -hmm. And so they so you want to explain to them what cadre is. Yeah, so so cadre are our older cadets or upperclassmen who for us are our juniors are called cows and our our, our seniors are called firsties. Do your so, sophomores have a term? Uh yucks, they're yucks. Okay. <laughs> or yearlings, one of the two. Um, so they're, um, they're, the yucks, the yucks are not involved, but the, the cows and the firsties are. Okay. So they're just harping on you, harping on you, harping on you. They load you onto these buses. You, obviously you're not talking or anything you like that. You get on a bus. Yeah, we get on a bus because it takes... Nice! <laughs> <laughs> it takes like, it takes like a minute to get to the barracks and they offload you. Oh, and so they're not taking you into the field. No, 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 no. Okay. This, this is day one. This We're is day good. one. Yeah, We're so good. You, have, you still have to get issued all your stuff. Yeah. Blood test done, pull up test done. Um, all this paperwork, you have to swear in legally. Right there. Uh, because you're active one. duty technically. So day one, you swear in. They okay. say, listen, if you want to leave, leave now because technically your property after you do, you know, you know, the they whole spiel. You. Exactly. They, they do. You. They do. They literally do. So you swear in. Then after you get through all that, you know, you're lined up in the hallways in, in, in our academic building. Then you get shipped out to, or you don't even ship out, you just walk. Or it's like a fast jog 
to to knobby walk something I don't whatever that is <laughs> speed walking right? yeah oh, yeah so we get to what we call central area and they're receiving you right yeah. they're screaming at you take all your stuff out of your bags and load this it is in. on the deck the per like the so field. to speak so to, in mm, the middle of all the barracks where you it's explain. like a quad like your version of your center quad okay you know your checker yeah. thing it's our version of that but it's just concrete for us okay gotcha. okay gotcha. so they're saying like take your crap inventory, mm -hmm. inventory. Sure. they're screaming at you take your crap out of your bags you know phone out so, you know whatever and they take a day one and they're taking all your stuff so throughout the day do they only take your phones or do they take any other like comfort items or anything like that they have an approved list so you can bring like your own underwear, your own socks. They have to be. A, they can't have logos, and they have to be like yeah, certain. You know, what, you know what I mean. Just like, like tidy whities <laughs> and white socks, no logos. Exactly. I, and I socks. I hate wearing long socks. Like I, I hate wearing long socks. But that's all you can wear. Well, if um, you're wearing, so okay, continue. And then I have. I have another. Question. No, I got you. Yeah, and so just like the whole day, so you get your head shaved. You know, you're doing this pull up um, test just to get a baseline on your physical fitness. Um, really, it's just our days, just getting all your crap, getting you processed, but the whole time you're getting screamed at and yelled at, and you're doing getting told what to do, 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 and there's no break until about five o'clock. And the instructions are not clear, right? So not at all. No they're not problem. giving you clear instructions. No. They're having, they're giving you just enough information so, so that exactly. you can trial and error to the point where you will get it right, but they have the exactly. opportunity to. Exactly. Yeah, they, exactly. They are going so, to correct you. In so, a, in a, in yeah, so it's not, voice. it's not, it's not, take these things, put it in your bag and tighten it this way or zip it up this way. It's, no it's, please and thank yous. Exactly. No please <laughs> and thank yous. And you, the whole time you can't talk, look forward. They always say like, count the hairs on the back of the person's do head. Do you brace? No, we do no. not brace. Okay. So they used to. They used they to. Did, we yeah. don't do that anymore. Okay, that's interesting because, so... Again, I know there's a lot of terms that many of you may or may not know. Uh, those of you that are at academies of similar um, standard, I guess, you, you'll know what bracing is. But for those of you who don't know, bracing is basically, basically, basically where you just tuck your chin all the way to your back of your head and you're like this. And yeah. You look like an idiot and it's demeaning. And it's you get your great. head shaved off of that? We do, right off the bat. So you were bald at one bald. point. Bald. So I went from, my hair's pretty long right now. This would not fly with regs at all. Mm -mm. No? They're pretty strict on them. Okay. So I have to have like the sides to like a one or a one up to a yeah. two. Yeah, so that that would fly. That would yeah. fly. And my hair is normally looking like that, but you know, obviously I'm letting it grow out a little bit. Because we're on quarantine break. What's up? <laughs> But um, yeah, and so your head shaved, that's just demeaning in itself because I've never had my hair that short, obviously. Um, so yeah, so at five o'clock, what they do is they put all the parents in the stands on the parade field. Um, and so what happens is it looks horrible, but they have every single plebe and all the cadre do a, do a parade, essentially. Um, and you swear in out there too, um, just in front of your parents. Like and stuff collectively. Like like collectively, one exactly. Repeat after me. Exactly. Three words. Exactly. Three words. Okay. And so that you do all that, and then your parent, you don't see your parents, but they try to pick you out in the crowd with like binoculars. Yeah. Right? Okay. And then you turn around, you go back into the barracks, and then that's the end of the day. Kind of, you know, you're just doing yeah. night crap, and then you get in your room. Kind get of in your room, kind of. I mean, you're still you're like a chicken with its head cut off. You don't know yeah. what's going on. You don't know. Oh, right, because that coming week is the training. I, yeah, yeah cause, cause I'm cause, thinking of what we did. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't know anything. So they're just really the first day is just getting you in, getting you all you need. Explain kind of when the day was was coming to an end, evening time. You're in your room. The last duty of the day has been completed on the mm -hmm. first day. What what are you thinking when you finally get back to your room and you're like, oh, I can breathe for like two seconds? Because so, that's what it feels exactly. like. You get back and you're like, Whew. so I get back to my room, right? And I'm sitting in there. You're sitting in your chair and you you you're meeting your, your two happened. roommates, and you're so just you just kind of sitting. You have two during. Okay. I do now still, but during Beast I did two. Beast is the version they call Beast Barracks. It's like boot camp, whatever you're called. Um, like hell we. Mm -hmm. So I'm in there and I'm just thinking to myself. I'm like, holy cow, like. What have I gotten myself into? Like, what were your roommates like? Were they kind they of were cool? like? So Warrior. one of them was a prepster. So we have a prep school that has about two hundred kids in it. Um, that's for prior enlisted or athletes. Yeah. Um, and so they do an extra they year get, before. Do they kind of amongst their reputation? I would mm -hmm. say is their reputation more of 
you're not special. Do your own th- you, do they blend well or are they do they get privileges? Oh What's, no 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 they don't get any privileges. Not like privileges, but are they more lenient on them? Is no, there any not kind at all. Of, nothing, okay. nothing. They're the same. They do know more. They, so they did, did a whole year right. of this crap previous. So they're like so they already been training they, for exactly. This. So yeah. they had their own version of of boot camp. Theirs was only three weeks. Ours was six weeks. And were they already there before you got there? No no no. They went. So home they have to summer. do it again. They have to do everything. Okay. Home. Okay. So yeah. So they're it's essentially a fresh start. So that's a big difference. I'll explain real quick with the Citadel and then let you pick back up. So that's a big difference at the Citadel specifically. A lot of people will tell you that athletes get special privileges and. And they get the opportunity to kind of head to the locker rooms and stuff, so that that's kind of different. And maybe being a senior military academy, that's probably why, because not everyone is swearing in mm-hmm. and immediately going into the military. I think it's something like 30%, 40%, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Something. But, um, but yeah, like our athletes come and they matriculate, which is like their our date. So they, they get received about three, two, three weeks early so uh-huh. that they can start training. And so they get received, and they're already there, and they are just kind of chilling while we are doing our hell week. I think they, uh, they, I don't think they do it with us. They have a separate, so it's all the athletes have a matriculation day, and they come in and do their thing, mm-hmm. and then all of us, all the court okay. comes in. So that's how it works, and uh, they get shit for it, but yeah, I mean, well, because think about it, like they're the, the way that they have it is their cadre. Are athletes too. Oh, Therefore, okay, yeah, yeah. they're going to be on the same team. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to, you know, so it's not the same relationship exactly. between a cadre member, it's upperclassman, and a, and a freshman because they're going to have to bond at some point. <clears throat> exactly. But carry on. Do you remember where you left off? Um, yeah, so just, the pre- room, just, yeah. just one little note on the prep school is just like, it's not for all athletes. It's just athletes who, who either just they thought that they needed to knock out some more classes. Or, or people coming straight from the army. We have a lot of prior enlists. I, I'd say like in my class of 1,100, we probably have like 200 prior enlisted yeah. people from various jobs in the army. But they kind of come through, they want to like, get them back into the swing of the academic setting before they start back up in the academy. So there's still a lot of athletes who just normally commit and then they start yeah. as a freshman. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no special treatment throughout the summer. Um, nothing like that. You're, you're in there doing the same stuff. Um, well, and, and cocked, baby. Exactly. And so, yeah, so I'm just like at the end of the day and you're just, you're just like, crap, you know, like, what did I get myself through? And like, you know, I'm, I mean, you know, it's going to sound very first world problem, but it's kind of like, I'm not going to have my phone for six weeks, no contact. Yeah, well, I mean, like, nobody does that no for one, fun. Exactly. Really. Mm-mm. Everybody's on their phone. It's a, mm-hmm. it, it's almost an extension of everybody's body Pretty at this much point. at this point. Which, it's kind of unfortunate in some aspect, yeah, but yeah, true. I mean, I get, I felt that same feel. Yeah, no contact, nothing with mm-hmm. anybody. I mean, put yourself in this shit. Like, yeah, it's you know. hard. It's hard. All I have, we had letters, so those were those were a big, yeah, big thing. Letters, so yeah. yeah. So through the six weeks, you go to the mail room probably once a week, and you get some letters and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so just like thinking, you know, you're just mind games at that point. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that the summer wasn't physically taxing. Uh, I don't think like obviously there's a lot of physical strain. You're rucking a lot, running, yeah. you know all that stuff. But I think it's definitely more mental than anything. Yeah. Uh, just because you're 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 playing with just your mind and like what if all the what ifs. You know, it's like what if I was home having a good time with my friends our yeah. last our last summer before yeah. before you know before college. And, and that's what gets that's what got to me the most. Exactly. It's like you know what? Here I am. Here I am doing this shit. Exactly. And guess what? Uh, Literally, almost every single one of my buddies from high school's done. They're out drinking and partying, and I I love drinking and partying. I did it. I did my fair share in Rome in high school. I mean, I'm going to expose myself, but like, I mean, both of us did. And it's like, you're like, damn, like I I really wish I was doing that, exactly. but why am I here? And you're exactly. like, why am I here? And exactly. that's when that's kind of when I would sit down and go, why am I here? And that's what that's what that's, that's what true. made me. Eat it up. I mean, like you start. You why, start are you, why, exactly. why are you here? You could be partying, but you're not. So you're not. good. Exactly. As Jocko Willink would yeah, say. Yeah, good. Good. As Jocko <laughs> Willink would say. <laughs> good. <laughs> black and white. Make this in black. And white. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. And it's just big mind games, and it really makes you kind of think it. Like you said, like why are there? And it kind of puts things into perspective. And it's like, 
you know, you are gonna have to give up a lot of stuff and yeah. and and you know, on the weekends as freshmen you're not allowed to leave or go do anything anyway, so And and, and like I don't know exactly where West Point is in relation to um the city. Yeah. And so it's an hour north of the city. So so like on a weekend though, do you go but, to the city? So so I would, but the freshmen can't. So uh, what all freshman year all until they until you become a sophomore, junior, senior, you can't, <laughs> you can't go. <laughs> so you can't go do something uh, again. So my Fridays consist of. What did my Fridays? Going to the chow hall. Going to the gym. Like I said, just the little stuff, messing around yeah. with your friends. You're not even allowed to have an Xbox up there. Yeah. But I snuck I mine up there. We couldn't have our sophomore year because our company leadership was awesome. See, that sucks. They were but great. They were <laughs> so good. In fact. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I mean, the whole, you know, just uh, BS stuff that you have to, you have to deal with and you can't. At Mike Company 20. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't, you can't say no and you can't choose for yourself because yeah. they, they call the shots and, uh, but yeah, so me and my roommates, we snuck all of our Xboxes up there, so yeah. we'd be playing on the weekends, but again, I'd much rather be out doing stuff than sitting on the Xbox all day. Oh yeah. Um, which is kind of funny because I'm pretty well conditioned for this whole quarantine thing because it's like, I mean, on the weekends I'll just hang out anyway, yeah. so. But, uh, yeah, that's just something you kind of have to deal with as far as that. What's up, guys? That wraps up episode one of Misfire, where we talked a lot about the United States Military Academy itself and the Citadel, a senior military college that I attend. Um, we talked a little bit about the differences in the two and kind of what day one, day zero, whatever you want to call it, looks like. Make sure to tune in to episode two where we're kind of going to cover a little more of the fun stuff and what goes on really behind the scenes. Thanks, guys. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode two of Misfire. Uh, I know the last episode we kind of talked about day one and the rough parts of being at a military academy of any kind, really. Uh, they all have their similarities. Um, in episode two today, we are going to talk about some of the behind the scenes stuff and a lot of what goes on, you know, that's really fun and enjoyable at the school even when you wouldn't think that uh, some situations are that enjoyable. A lot of it comes down to just having fun with your boys and uh, really making the best out of a shitty situation sometimes. So I hope you guys enjoy. So we kind of talked about day zero uh, and we kind of got the rundown of that and I would assume, you know, a very very brief summary of you know Citadel the following week for for freshmen which are called knobs so if you even call them knobs you know, or we're called plebes so I don't think knobs plebes freshmen um, like you know the next week is, or the next six weeks really is all your training but in the first week it's like you for us it was like and I'm sure for you it's absorbing and I'm, you are a sponge you oh, are absorbing oh, yeah. information at an extremely high rate because mm -hmm. at that point it's not school it's you know, it's just, this is what you need to do, this is how you need to do it, and if you do it any, any way outside these tiny parameters, mm -hmm. get shit on, kid. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, and yeah, it's just learning a lot of stuff, a lot of briefs, a lot of sitting in auditoriums all day. Yeah. Uh, we have a knowledge book that's probably like this thick or so that we have yeah. to memorize throughout the whole summer, yeah. and you have to check off things as you go along, um, just like things about West Point and get quizzed and on, get quizzed on. For it. yeah, exactly, get knowledge for it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, getting dropped is what we call it, or, or yeah, if you really messed dropped. up and like you and a group of people on subjects call getting smoked. Yeah. Um, which wasn't, I mean, it's really not horrible. It's just like yeah. just physical punishment, I guess, for your mental mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but for your human mistake. Your human mistake. Why are you not a robot? Exactly. It's, it's day three. Exactly. Why do you not know this yet, yeah. you could, uh, You know, it's like I, I don't know. So <laughs> y'all's amazing, fantabulous. Great uniforms. What's uh, on the during the week? Do you you wear like your you wear multi like BDUs? Uh, o OCPs. So, OCPs. So we have OCPs. That's the new pattern. Whereas I think y'all wear ACUs, right? So our our upperclassmen can still wear ACUs okay. or multicam, but like it's kind of fun to distinguish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So like it's honestly like a badge to be wearing ACUs, ACUs okay. even though it is the one. Ugly, sir. Ugly. It's the worst camouflage ever made. Don't know what it blends into. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but yeah, so we but were, what do I know? Yeah, so usually, usually Monday, Wednesday, Fridays 
our our class uniforms are just like a dress shirt with our name tag. Gray dress shirt. Uh, yeah, like a dark gray dress shirt. And, and dark gray pants. Yeah, like gray pants. With same the thing. Same thing. Like you have the same pants, yeah. I'm sure. Um, you wear a tie. Um, so in the winter time, we have long sleeve okay. dress shirts. With I the think tie. they're bringing that back to the, so we don't have that. We just wear like a field, like a uh, almost like a Letterman jacket, like a company almost, jacket, kinda, every company yeah, patch. Yeah. We have the same thing. So yeah, yeah we wear that over uh, just a short sleeve in the winter. But but um, they bring. I think they're bringing back the long sleeves. Mm. Do you like that or? Uh, I, it's uncomfortable, but you gotta keep in mind like the difference. It's freezing up north, so we have a lot true, of cold true, weather true. stuff. Yeah. So we have. Fleeces, we have we have you yeah. know uh, all these different things that we can kind of wear that go over our uniform. So when we're outside all the time, pretty much in the winter, you're wearing a jacket of some sort. We have multiple different yeah. things for different weather categories and stuff. But and deep blasting um, in the rain once you get inside is just fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> so it feels real musty, and you start to smell like a wet dog. Your jacket does. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so you're just when you're when you're in the academic buildings, it's always just a either your ACU top and obviously your boots and stuff. So uh, our camera died and we are going to pick back up where we left off. Um, so we were talking, we had covered day zero uniforms, kind of what attracted you to go there. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of covered, we kind of covered some fun things, having, having some time with the boys. And I guess we were kind of gonna kind of shift towards a compare and contrast of the Citadel and West Point, and that's going to be kind of tough to do because I don't know that much about West Point at all. And I don't know that much about yeah. the Citadel. So, um, really, obviously, the main biggest difference would be that, you know, the Citadel, only 30% commission, and y'all just wearing, like, day one, it's on your property. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, so, aside from that and, and the thought that, you know, you would go directly into the military for what five five years? Five years after three years. So aside from that, I mean, really they're pretty similar. Um, I know there's differences like with Queen Brace, you don't, you know, obviously y'all probably do y'all go out into the field and so, do field work? So not we have so kind of, sort of. So it's like we have stuff called A C training weekends. You have probably like twelve of those throughout the year I'd say. Yeah. And that's where you're out like not maybe not twelve, but like I don't know, I don't know, somewhere around there but we um it's like you know like maneuvering training repelling or yeah or whatever it may be shooting training marksmanship whatever it is um but most of the time we train most of the summer so that kind of makes up for not staying out in the field or not doing like serious like our like like before covid i was going to go to air assault school the mm -hmm. first two weeks of my summer and then i had four weeks of field training after that Okay. So that was what I was going to do this summer. So that's six weeks of training out of like my, I think it was like 10 weeks summer. So training most of the summer straight. So it's, you know, it's not like, it's not like it's an academic thing. It's purely military training over the summer. And then during the year, it's predominantly um, academic with a little bit of military mixed in on yeah. the, some weekends. Yeah. So, um, and, and let's kind of talk about, you know, I think we kind of covered it, but do you plan on making a full career out of the army and, and the military? Is that what you plan to do or what exactly is your plans maybe after the military or how long do you plan on staying in the army? Yeah. So I can't really speak on how long I plan on staying. That's just mm -hmm. kind of something you, you yeah. kind of experience and then, um, decide on, um, when you get to that point. But, uh, you know, I, I could see myself, doing five staying. and fly or staying in yeah um you know i really can't speak on what i plan on doing and even if it's not after five it could be you know 10 or it could be 12 or whatever it is um so i really don't have a plan on on how long i plan on staying in um, yeah. however just generally speaking after the military i'm a law major a spanish minor um so i can um you're spanish minor i am a spanish you're gonna minor. help me out this summer i can Some spanish i can yes because i'm uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get shafted. I'm gonna get shafted. So, um, yeah. But yeah, so Spanish foreign language. So just like after the military, possibly law school, um, or work for a government agency, or potentially going to business. There's a wide variety of stuff I could get into. Right. Um, so the reason I chose the major wasn't necessarily that I want to be a lawyer. It was more so just leaving myself a, an open plane of things I could choose from. You could even go work with that uh, that guy. Uh, Nick, 
Nick Stallings. That one, yeah, yeah this guy, Nick Stallings, pot- potential, potential business owner. Right? <laughs> so maybe for the legal side of things, I could get involved, trademarks, and true, stuff like that. True, because a big part of the business would also be like uh, lobbying and doing like talking to congressmen and potentially changing exactly. some, some things there. Who do you think handles the legal side of contracts that you could make? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we'll oh, see. Yeah. We'll see. Oh, maybe we'll you, see. you might see another podcast in 10 years and we could be sitting in. <laughs> Uh, a big, a big big bigger, office. bigger room than this, and and uh, you know, who, who knows? We'll see. Who knows? So obviously, everyone is uh, undergoing their quarantine right now. And we are obviously doing a great job of uh, social distancing. Um, yeah. So uh, that's that's it's kind of it. Um, so what? How how is it kind of affecting you? It being that it's your first year. How do you feel it's affected your year as far as, you know, do, do you feel like it got cut too short? Are you missing it a little bit? I know it sucks. I yeah, never no, feel yeah. like, oh, it sucks. <laughs> it's great to be home, obviously, yeah. and be with your family. But um, what, how, what, what do you have to say about quarantine and how it's going so far? Um, yeah, so just as far as, so like you said, like being your first year, if I had to choose of any of my years to be cut short, obviously the first year. Yeah. Because of all just the, the stuff you got to deal with. Um, and so just kind of, I guess, I do feel like it was cut short just because I miss all my friends. Um, two of my best buddies live in um, Georgia and Florida. Yeah. And I, we, me and my buddy, I actually picked up my buddy in Georgia and we drove to Tallahassee at the beginning of the spring, at the beginning of uh, like the quarantine thing. Yeah. Um, when it was still legal to leave, I guess. So saw them for a little bit. But yeah, I definitely miss like all my company mates, all my friends. Um, what company are you in, by the way? E2, so that's the Brew Dogs. Okay. So, yeah, so I, I, I take pride in that, so that's pretty cool. Company pride. Company pride. It's a big thing, like, it honestly yeah, is. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, and, yeah, so we're just doing that. The ple- We get recognized tomorrow um, online, um, which means, like, I no longer have to abide by all these rules, like not talking outside or, or whatever, whatever it is. Um, I can be friends with upperclassmen. I can follow them on Instagram. Um, I can call them by their first name. They don't. They can call me by my first name. Um, so it's kind of a big change, kind of lifestyle change. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, um, it, it, it is a, an awesome feeling, but it kind of sucks that you're not gonna be able to live exercise in that. it. Yeah, exactly. you're not gonna be able to really exercise it as a freshman, exactly. like I got to in the time that I was there or at the Citadel when, when I got recognized, you know, it was, it's a huge, it's an all day smoke sesh, like y'all would have. Yeah, exactly. And you get absolutely exhausted on the deck early in the morning and then come back, do your class set of push ups, die, lay there, get dressed, march, whatever. And, and then it's, after that, everything is just like a giant weight just lifted off your shoulders of all hand yeah. this, 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 Yeah, this. exactly. So, um, and I know like a lot of guys, to like and and maybe it's a little different at West Point. I I would honestly say that it probably is a little more straight up locked on than the Citadel, most likely. Um, and, but do you see guys that are just get shitty after rec day? Are there stories of guys that just stop giving a shit or stop putting out as much, or is that not as per- um, predominant? I wouldn't say it's as predominant. Like the only difference between a freshman and a sophomore is that. Freshmen are under more restrictions. Right. It's literally academics get harder as you go on. Right. So it's there's no room for slacking, and you get more responsibility as you know. I'm sure the Citadel is the same yeah. thing. So you don't. It's not like you have time to slack off anyway. You have more ways that you can socialize. You have more ways that you can kind of quote unquote release from whatever you're doing yeah. um, on the weekends and stuff like that, and just being more social. And that's helpful a lot. Exactly. It is. It is because like you get time to decompress. Exactly. So, so it's not necessarily that you're slacking off. You don't really see that. I mean, obviously there's a few people who just like, you know, just kind of like, all right, I just want to make it to graduation. Like screw it. Like yeah. whatever, I'm just going to survive and not put out. I'll just do what's needed and nothing more. Yeah. Um, exactly. That's, you see, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Exactly. Like so the guys are like shit, personal yeah. appearance. Kind of. Uh, no, yeah. So like, obviously there's a few, um, but for the majority, I'd say the majority of people, once you, once you really get in it and you, 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 you know, you're just going through your years, you really just want to be the best version of yourself. Not really necessarily for yourself, but you always have to think of like when you commission, you want to be in your best physical shape for your, your Joes or whoever you're yeah. leading your platoon. You want to pass the eye test. You want to be a good leader for them. Yeah. It's not necessarily about developing. So 
you're better personally, um, which I think is a big distinguisher between regular college and and yeah. and you know just an academy or, or the Citadel is it's not really thinking about um, how I become a better version of myself so I can succeed and I can how do I make other exactly people succeed? exactly and progress yeah. in the business world and progress wherever it's more so how do I make it so I will be the best leader best version of myself physically fit whatever it is great piece of advice from <laughs> Jacob a young wise mind <laughs> yeah, yeah for just, sure that that's ex that's very spot on that it couldn't have been more well said and. Um, I would say that's especially true in the military, especially if, if you've got, you know, guys working on you and doing things that not everyone has to deal with. You're under a, a lot different circumstances, For things sure. that can be more stressful, especially when you've got dudes' lives potentially on the line in some cases and in some jobs. So, I mean, yeah, that's a great, a great point and that's very insightful, I would say. So, as far as quarantine also, what, what's been keeping you busy since you've been home? So yeah, so I have all of my schedule hasn't changed. I still have to sit in every class as I would normally, but it's all online. Which sucks. Which sucks. So I'm usually I'm on my computer from eight till four every day. Yeah. Or maybe not so much if a class ends early or it's asynchronous or whatever it is. Yeah. So I'll get off my class and I'll do homework, and then I'll I actually rent it out a lot of, or loaned out a lot of gym, uh, like equipment for my gym mm -hmm. here. So I've been working out every afternoon, um, just trying to keep fit and stuff like that. So good, good. working out, that takes up a lot of my time. Fishing, I've been fishing a lot. Um, doing what I can with buddies, I've been mean, playing poker and stuff. But yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing crazy. I mean, we can't go out and do stuff. So yeah, I know. Being that sucks. Outside, we're doing fires and whatnot together. So yeah. that's about it. But that really fills my time. Yeah. And I mean, I, I get that. I've been almost losing it. I mean, I don't like not being able to go out and exactly. just like anyone else. But um, so now to kind of close out, I guess, and start to kind of um, wrap episode one of Misfire. Uh, <laughs> 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 wrap up episode one of Misfire. Um, let's just kind of do a little bit of a back and forth, maybe compare and contrast a little bit. Um, kind of just do some Q&A. Um, are there any questions that you would have for me as far as what goes on maybe at the Citadel? Is something the same? Is something different, etc.? Yeah, so just like, just as far as career paths go, like, I guess the question is like for us, like everyone knows what they're going to do. Like yeah. everyone already has a... When do you, you get your MO or like, when do you get your MO? So your senior year, they have something yeah. called branch night and prior to senior year, you're doing meetings and they're... It's a lot of class rank evaluation, and yeah. evaluating and stuff like that. And then so there's something called branch night where you open an envelope and then you find out and everyone freaks out and everyone goes and gets absolutely hammered. And then they come back to the barracks yes. and everyone's like dancing and stuff like that. It's fun. I have videos. Um, but, and then probably like, I think it's like four months later, there's something called post night. And that's where after Bullock, which is basic officer's leadership course for each branch, you then go to your first post where, whether it's Fort Campbell, Fort Bragg, Fort Riley, wherever it is. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, that's based all off order merit, which is a mix of academic, um, military grade, which is what we call, which is like going above and like serving or, or yeah. you know, like service or, or, you know, helping each other out and get graded on that and like character stuff. And then you have a physical grade, which is your PT tests and whatnot. And yeah. like boxing class goes into that or combatives class goes into that. Yeah. Military movement, like those types of physical classes. Um, so yeah, just like my question is like, being in a place where everyone's kind of one career oriented and everyone's kind of on the same wavelength what's it like at the Citadel when you have some people who want to commission some don't you're majoring in these classes you're doing this you're doing that everyone's in this military lifestyle from what I understand yeah but how does it work when you have a group that you know that or maybe you don't know that wants to commission and a group that wants to go say the business route so so I would say that it's kind of it's kind of weird the relationship we have at the uh, Citadel between cadet well any any cadets because I think they're all the same but like Overall, I would say that it really doesn't play that big of a part into it considering the fact that it, a lot of people, I would say, are in the now and they're living in the Citadel environment rather than what am I going to be environment. And so at the, the point where everyone's kind of just Citadel focused. They focus on like 
all the dumb shit that goes down in the mm-hmm. barracks and like you know and the yeah. culture because yeah. every academy has their own culture, culture yeah. and 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 their like you know values or whatever and everybody shares that and so that's what allows i think people to bond together and stuff and so i would say overall most people you know stay tight over that people give people shit for commissioning and yeah. flipping their life up really people give people shit for not commissioning yeah. and it, i mean it, you're gonna get shit either way and that's just part of that's part of bonding to me at least is is you know you get to you get to give everybody exactly. shit for anything yeah, so it really doesn't matter but <laughs> uh yeah i mean it's a it's a fun time but it's not like you said and a lot yeah. of it is a lot of it i think really that plays the biggest part is you know, everybody is the same under the same rule and under the same system and you either you love it and you hate it. So I mean that's what I would say. But it's definitely weird. I mean it's weird. It's a weird place. And that's something that like a lot of people I guess overlook, you know, and I'm sure you get it. Like I bet West Point's pretty freaking weird. It is really weird. Everybody's like people are probably just weird with each other. Yeah. You know I mean really I get weird. it. Like, yeah. It's like when you become so close and you're mm-hmm. all a bunch of dudes, really, I mean, I'm sure you've got your fair share of females. Yeah, it's like 37%. Yeah. 37? Yeah. Wow. They're that's pushing, a lot they're pushing for 50, so. Wow. So it's a lot. That's of whack, man. That's a lot. We have 8%. People are like, damn, that's a shit ton. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, dude. dude. We're, 37. <laughs> We're 37. Each year it's just going to get more and more. Whoa. So. Slim pickings. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, so like, God. are there people cadating? Yeah, they're, that's ah. what we call it, cadating. Ah. I would never. Ah. I, would, <laughs> I would um, I would never cadate in my life. Because I feel like that causes a conflict of interest. It know? does, be, and also like, personally speaking, like, I wouldn't say my type is more of the female military persona. I'd say I'm more of you know just. We're not gonna get into that. <laughs> But, but, but... I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, like, what I will say is just, like... Yeah, just, like, Canadian can be real awkward sometimes. And especially when you're stuck in middle of nowhere New York within Gates. Yeah. And you can't really leave that often. And, like, you kind of get cabin fever, so to speak. And, like, everyone just starts mingling, we'll say, with each other. Releasing their door. Release it. Yes, yes. There's a lot of tension going on. A lot of... Yeah, anyway. So, so you know. So, like, you see it happen a lot. And... People are kind of getting cuffed all the time, and it's just like it, I've seen it cause problems. I've seen it work out, and oh, it and, works out all the time. But 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 also, and yeah, and if that's like honestly, sometimes I've seen a great dynamic work yeah. out with that, where it's just like we're on the same page. That's what it is. Good, good. That's you. Yeah. It's not me. That's you. Good. But um, also, what um, like being that, and and this is not like sexist in any way, but I am saying like it. Would you think that, like, are there, there's, like, some awkward times when there's females involved in certain things, especially being in a military environment, and I think that I can kind of speak to this to Mm -hmm. a certain degree, and maybe you can, like, take it a step further since it's, you know, our differences in schools, but, like, I would say that, you know, there's definitely some just times where dudes are being guys and shit can go too far if, if a female's involved, and it's just not somewhere that... I don't know. I mean, you're the same way. I mean, like, I like to be a gentleman and yeah, 100%. very, like, professional, good 100%. dude when I'm around female. But if I'm, like, totally chilling with my boys, yeah. it's, a, it's a very different dynamic. So, so, yeah, like, definitely that. And something I've kind of noticed, which is kind of, like, took me by surprise of being there. Because, like, growing up, you know, it's always just treat women with respect and, yeah. you know, treat them well and hold the door, whatever it is, you know, just... Chivalry, so to shit on you. Exactly. Is that where you're going? What? <laughs> oh, I, was, I was saying they'll shit on you for no, it. No, no, no. It's not. No, no. So, well, kind of. Well, Sometimes. We'll see. We'll see in a second. So, what I found was going there, if there's a 50 pound thing that needs to be lifted, and they say, all right, can, can you get some people to lift it? I mean, just inherently, the guys will go and lift it up, right? And pick yeah. it up and do, you know, because inherently you're just stronger, whatever, right? What I found is actually, (laughs) what I actually found was, which kind of took me by surprise, was we got there and for some reason, you know, I can't really speak on it because I'm not a woman, but 
but whenever someone would say like, oh, I got it, like, I'll take care of this, like, I'll do this for you, like, let me carry that, like, it's pretty heavy, like, let me do it on my own. It was like, all of a sudden, a trap got set, and then they're, you know, they get kind of offended, and they say, well, why can't I do it? You know, like, I don't, I don't think that it's, you can't do it, I'll just, I'll take care of this for you, like, I don't mind. And they don't. Yeah, exactly. So, there's actually been a lot of contests on that, because there's definitely, I feel like, a difference of pull of women going to regular colleges and women going to like a military yeah. academy at Citadel. Of because just like, they, I would say that, you know, obviously. Most of them know exactly what they want to do. Exactly, to exactly. Them. And so they're tough. Like they're not, yeah. they're, you know what I mean? So like, it's just a different kind of thing. It kind of took me by surprise. Um, just kind of them being. And, you know. and also the different, and I will say this too, not, not, I've seen some outstanding females mm -hmm. at the Citadel. My company commander last year, Fantastic person, all around good person, well spoken, ha has planned a career in the army. Like she is a badass, dude. Yeah. And I, 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 she has my full respect. Yeah. And and most of them do. I I will give respect, earned and yeah, free given. You know, but like, I just like I'm saying the what I'm getting at is the the dynamic I guess of women that go to regular college too and and that go to a military academy like you said like they're not just tough but like they a lot of them just you see that they're driven too mm -hmm. and like I'm a lot of just in general well not even just women like in general people you know that go to academies or senior military academies a lot of them have a purpose or like they they know kind of what they want and like that's something yeah. that I always look for in people in general to associate with in the first place is like yeah. I like to be around people that are like me and I know what I want and this is like what I want to surround myself with yeah. just in general so I mean it's always good to see that as well so um you kind of talk about plans after the army whatnot uh where are you retiring Retiring <laughs> so far, no, so far away, like it's no, not even no, real. Honestly, it's like a fabrication I, of our imagination. I honestly have, like, I thought about, I think about this sometimes. Yeah. Like, I deal somewhere in the south, a hundred percent. Um, you know, I'm, I, I, I was born in California. And my parents grew up in California, but we moved out here when I was ten. And like, from what I remember, just like, it's a total culture change yeah. coming here, and I, I honestly love it here. People are nicer. It's more slower pace, which is nice. Yeah. Room to breathe, um, and so I just definitely somewhere in the south. I want to get some land. I think land Me is too. land is probably one of the most. It is. I'm not even gonna say one of the most. It is the most valuable thing you can buy, for the main reason of it is yours, and the government can't take it away from you. So therefore, most, most of the time, okay. And it's your land. If you want to build a house on it, you can. If you want to put up a berm and shoot on it, you can. If yeah. you want to stock your pond with bass, you can. It's yours and it's your decision. And so I think that kind of emulates, just in a nutshell, what America is. is it's You can have your land and you can make what you want of it. And I think that retiring on something like that and having a project and going out there working, yeah. maybe have some animals, do whatever I want, yeah. it's, it, it's kind of like speaks to the whole... Southern lifestyle. Southern lifestyle, so yeah. to speak. I don't know about somewhere like Mississippi. I'm thinking like South Carolina, North Carolina. Yeah, maybe that's, Georgia. That's kind of Georgia, yeah. Georgia, one of those three are pretty good. Tennessee, you know, getting a little farther out, out of reach. Oh, but Tennessee. Tennessee's that's where, I like yeah. Tennessee. No, yeah. I like Tennessee. I like Tennessee. <laughs> but, but, you know, I love South Carolina, obviously. Yeah. Um, we're so we I mean you guys don't know but we're a mile from the border um, Yeah, and so you know we always go to South Carolina for gas or whatnot best beaches in South Carolina Charleston is something I'm very jealous of because uh, <laughs> I love Charleston. And it's my favorite beach Well, it's funny though too because like especially going back to kind of the freshman year talk, you know and, and New York you're an hour from it, but you know the Citadel freshman year you're you're in you are in the heart of Charleston mm -hmm. And you're in these walls, and all this fun shit's going on right outside. But you're here, mm. and you can't. You can't. You Can know, it's not just like oh, we can't. We could on weekends. We'd always have to wear our uniform. Uh, we don't really do. It, you, yeah, everyone changes, right? Yeah. Okay, I good. Mean, so like, we're I mean, you you get in trouble, like if you get caught, right? Yeah, but yeah. like still, so. um, but it's just like it's a nuisance, you know. I don't th I don't see a purpose in us wearing our uniform yeah. in, on the town, other than like. What it really is is it's publicity for the a school. PR stunt, yeah. So, whatever. But it, it is kind of ridiculous. There's no sense in it. Really, I guess to pick you out of the crowd. Pretty much, say, exactly. Like, Freshman, if you do something wrong, wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, all of us, juniors, oh. 
seniors. They all have to wear so, uniforms. So, so freshman, sophomores, and junior first semester do have to wear the uniform. But then when you're second semester junior, first semester senior, you get blazer. So you like have a blazer or tie or whatever. Oh, that sucks. That's way better. Than, I'd rather wear a blazer. Oh, than me tie. too. You'd be styling, but like you'd be say, like, styling. But like I'd still prefer yeah, to just wear city, jeans and, yeah. and a t-shirt personally. Yeah, no. Second semester senior year, you're like I'm pretty sure you're allowed to wear civvies provided you're yeah. proficient. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, do you miss it though? Do you miss like being there? Like yeah, honestly, I do. Like I wouldn't have thought I would say that because like when you're there, right. you're like I just want to leave. Leave. Um, and you take every opportunity possible to get out of the gates. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I do. Like I, I do miss the people. Like I said, the people are the pe are the things that are keeping you there. Yeah. Um, and I do miss just kind of like, just my everyday life because that's what I was so accustomed yeah. to. And and how's how is sorry to interrupt. But oh yeah. How, yeah. how is uh, that's another question. That's what I was gonna ask that I forgot. Um. How would you say the classes and stuff are here compared to, you know, normal college students, they, normal college students, we know what that life is like somewhat, but being that we are under a strictly regimented schedule mm -hmm. every day and you have to do certain things yeah. at certain times of the day and you cannot be late, mm -hmm. how, how is it coming to online classes where this is, this is like, you're at home, That's you're, cute. you're just chilling, yeah. like, but is it not, I, I don't know, I mean, I've been finding, like, my, it just got, like, it's, it's hard not being under the structure when you get it. Is, so it is, it is. It requires self-discipline. It does require self-discipline, and I think, like, I think something that I think everyone should at least shoot to experience is to have some kind of regimented schedule because you don't realize how beneficial it is. Yes. And to quote the all-powerful Jocko says discipline equals freedom. And so the more disciplined you are, actually the more time you'll have, therefore you can work on a side project. You can work on bettering yourself with working out or you can spend time with your family, whatever it is. So the more disciplined you are, actually the more time you will have. So you think like they take up a lot of our day doing stuff, yeah. right? So a lot, the majority, okay? But I, would, I actually have more time and I find myself being more productive when I am under a strict schedule because I would say, okay, well, when I'm done with this, I want to grind my homework and get it done so I can watch Netflix tonight on my phone yeah. before I go to bed. And that's the reward part. Exactly, the reward yeah. part. So, like, you're working for rewards, whereas here, I get done with class, I'm like, I kind of just want to call it quits for the day, work yeah. out, and, like, just play Xbox the rest of the night, you know? Yeah. So, like, it's and just... It happens. It, it, it happens. It happens to the best Every of us, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. It's just, like, a different yeah. atmosphere and... Yeah, I definitely enjoy being home just for the, you know, just like little things. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. That concludes episode two of Misfire, and we look forward to seeing you again on episode three coming soon.